Woo! Wasabi everybody, welcome back to another Commander video. This time I'm going to do something a little bit different, I don't think I've ever done these before, but I'm going to do what is known as a Deck Doctor video, where I take a Commander deck that a viewer has sent me, and I use my own taste in Commander to improve it. This one coming from Angry Mexican 77 uh, <laughs> that's their name. And I told them, hit me up on Twitter. If you want me to do more of these, and you're watching this, follow me on Twitter. My handle is uh, CommanderVoid4. If you want to reach out to me, just tweet out with my handle and send me a link to your Tapped Out or your Moxfield, whatever website you're using. And I'll go and take a look at your deck list and see what I can do. So Angry Mexican sent me a link to their Tapped Out. Weaving a Slug Web. So this is using the Commander option Thantis the War Weaver. And Thantis is a pretty cool option because it forces combat. We don't have a ton of commander options, especially three colored commander options that force combat like this. You also get Vigilance Reach and whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, you put a plus one plus one counter on your Thantis. So the focus here is pretty much combat. However, Angry Mexican here did say they were building a group slug deck that this was previously a Mogus God of Slaughter deck and they wanted to make it into a Thantis. So I'm going to look at this first, I'm going to look at their tapped out, and then I'm going to show you the updated my version of this deck. While I am going to focus way more on combat than with this deck, the original, I do want to adhere to a group slug theme, even though it's not going to be the primary focus of the deck I built. So right off the bat, let's look at their lands. Not really something I'm interested in improving, I think lands are very much personal preference. And for the sake of keeping the cost the same, I think it's around $500, $550 here. I'm not going to make it much more expensive than that. Only thing I might recommend is substituting Evolving Wilds or Terramorphic Expanse for basic lands or other dual lands, just to make mana fixing a little bit quicker. But we do have some utility here. I like Arcane Lighthouse, but I don't really see it being super necessary. This isn't a deck where we're going to focus on targeting a lot of creatures. Not to say it's a bad option, it's just not something I would choose. We've got Ghost Quarter to remove lands, that's pretty cool. And probably the best utility here is in the form of Rogue's Passage, so you can make a creature unblockable. One of the first things I really noticed about this is that you really only have 14 creatures in here. And if your deck is about combat, I know this is also going to be Group Slug, the commander's not really going to be taken advantage of. So you have 14 creatures here, you're going to want to focus on combat. And the 14 creatures that we have here are not really going to help us with our board presence. They're really just there to kind of synergize with our commander and be more about Group Slug. In my updated version, I don't have something like Angrath's Marauders. I have something a little bit more chaotic, something I think is a little bit better. We have Archfiend of Despair. Pretty expensive card, but it's definitely cool. You get, uh, you basically get Wound Reflection on a creature. Dockside Extortionist, cost-wise, I just left it in my deck. We have Dread. Now, this is what I'm talking about here. If you're going to play a Thantis deck, you want creatures that synergize with that. So we're going to have things like Dread in the new deck. Now, things like Erebos, great for card draw. If you want to pay that two life and two mana to draw a card, fantastic. Your opponents can't gain life. And I think you want creatures that are going to be able to attack easily. Erebos is likely never going to attack. Fumiko the Low Blood is the kind of creature we want to play, so I'm going to leave her in there if I can. Goblin Spymaster is another great one. We want to encourage our opponents to attack. We can force them to with our Thantis, but we're also going to want to focus on the benefits of them attacking our other opponents. We have Immolation Shaman. Pretty cool, but this is kind of general group slug that doesn't really synergize with our commander. We have Kazool, I think is perfect. Clothis is another cool one, taking advantage of the fact that we're also playing green. Most group slug decks are going to be red and black. Massacre Girl is kind of okay. Not really something I felt like keeping in this deck. And then we have Mogus God of Slaughter. Again, these gods are okay for a group slug strategy, if it's just pure group slug, but since our commander is all about combat, you know, Mogus is not a bad card, but not really something we want to keep in here. So then we have Torbrand, Thane of Redfell. Another cool card. We're playing a three-color deck, though. So not only could it be awkward in certain games to get three red mana, but a lot of our creatures are not going to be red, so... And we're not going to be dealing a ton of burn. And then we have Zancha Sleeper Agent, another great card if we're talking about Group Slug. We're talking about Forced Combat. Zancha is sweet. I don't like Planeswalkers, that's just my own personal preference, so I'm not going to keep Angrath and Tibalt in there. I just don't really see the point in having a Planeswalker with this kind of ability when you have other permanents that are better that can do the same exact thing. 
And while they do kind of go along with the group slug theme, we have a lot of combat focused ways that we can be more like group slug. And then we have eight sorceries here. We have some pretty good ones like Blasphemous Act. Uh, Dread Boar is one I, I don't want to play. It's sorcery speed. We have better removal that we can take advantage of in these colors. Farseek in Nature's Lore. Got Scheming Symmetry. Seeds of Innocence is a cool card, but I'm not going to let our opponents gain life. So there's a better card I think we can go for if we want to give our opponents creatures as well as destroy all their artifacts. And we also take care of enchantments too. So Seeds of Innocence is a great card, really underrated, but there's a little bit more we can do for removal. We have Sky Shroud Claim, 4 mana. We have a lot of ramp in here, a lot of artifact ramp in here too. And Siphon Mind, basically a better Black Harmonize. And the artifacts are kind of, you know, similar to the other sections. You had standard group slug like Ankh of Mishra. Doesn't really synergize with our commander though, so I'm going to try to stay away from things like this because we're not really going to take advantage of that with Arthantis. I guess we can get everyone low and then win through combat. It just seems too risky for me to do it that way. Now, Arcane Signet's cool. Bloodthirsty Blade is an awesome card. We love Goad, Cross Base. My approach to building the new deck was a little odd because I wanted to go for cards like Crawl Space initially, but you're going to see what I did. We want our opponents to attack us because there are many cards that will hurt them if they attack us. In addition to our Thantis getting bigger with plus one plus one counters and blocking them all day, there's a lot of things we can do to punish them for attacking us. So Crawl Space, it's a good card, but we want our opponents to attack us. You know, we're group slug. We're not afraid of anything. And then we have Cursed Totem. Again, not really going to synergize with Thantis. So I tried to stay away from cards like these. Felwar Stone, Cruel Signet, Mind Stone, Evan Rolls Disc. We got better removal in these colors. We don't really need Evan Rolls Disc. We can't even bring it back. Uh, Rakdos Signet, Soul Ring, Swiftfoot Boots, and two Talismans. Got a ton of artifact ramp. And I'm not going to lie to you, I don't think we need this much ramp. I think we have plenty of ramp in here. We could even take away three or four cards. And that's pretty much what I did. So going over to my deck, I will have both of them linked in the description below if you want to check them out. Thantis the Warweaver over here on Moxfield. Pretty much the same idea. We want to play Group Slug, but we also want to take advantage of combat. And I think by taking advantage of combat, we have a more consistent deck. So for draw purposes, we want to stay more Group Slug, Chaotic, kind of hurt everybody at the table. Wheel of Misfortune is a cool way to draw cards while also punishing the player who chooses the highest number, and the person who chooses the lowest number, they don't really get anything. And we have Zancha. Group Slug is very political too, you have a lot of political cards in this theme, and Zancha is incredibly political, you give it to a player you really want to punish the most, and you just dump all that mana into that ability and draw that many cards, make them lose a bunch of life, anyone at the table can do that. I like Siphon Mind, so I kept it in here, I think it's great for card draw. Oh, and by the way, if you guys want to send me deck lists or anything in the future, I highly recommend that whenever you enter a card text in to any of these websites that you use like a hashtag for different categories. So for this, it would be like hashtag draw and all the cards for draw would be in this one category. That's kind of what I do for my videos too. It makes it easier to focus on the purpose of each card. I like Toski, Bearer of Secrets, and Oren Frostfang because we're a combat deck and we're not going to try to hide it. If there are cards in here that are going to force us to attack as well, we want to take advantage of that. And Toski's great because Toski's indestructible. And basically these are both coastal piracy abilities where we will be able to draw cards off of dealing combat damage. We have forced combat cards in here. Now this is something I think you have to take advantage of in this deck, which makes it more like Group Slug. It's just Group Slug with more of a combat theme here. So I love Bloodthirsty Blade, kept it in there. Grenzo's awesome because whenever a creature you control deals combat damage, so that's individually triggered, you can go target creature that player controls. Goblin Spymaster is also great because it forces them to attack. You're giving them tokens, very much forcing everyone at the table to attack each other. Frontier Warmonger is a card from Commander 2020. Whenever one or more creatures attack one of your opponents or planeswalkers they control, those creatures gain menace until end of turn. So a huge benefit to attacking each other and not us. We have Fumiko the Low Blood forcing combat, and she also gets bigger because of Bushido. We have Kardur Doom Scourge. When he enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able, and attack a player other than you if able. So it kind of goads them without actually saying goad. 
and whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So this was made for this kind of deck. Then we have War's Toll. Whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, they tap all lands they control. And if a creature an opponent controls attacks, all creatures they control attack if able. And then we have Frenzied Saddle Brute. All creatures can attack your opponents and Planeswalkers your opponents control as though those creatures had haste. So a fantastic card. We want to reward our opponents for attacking each other. We have a newer card here, Geode Rager. This was from the Commander decks for Zendikar, or Zendikar Rising. Has a landfall trigger whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you goad each creature target player controls. So you really force combat here and goad is the best ability in this deck, hands down. Yes, we keep them from attacking us with goad, but the point of this deck is to force combat, period. So that's an added benefit that they can't attack us. Warmonger Hellkite, all creatures attack, each combat if able. But the real cool thing here is that you have an ability. For two mana, attacking creatures get plus one power until end of turn. We can use that on our opponent's creatures, really take advantage of that. And then we have Avatar of Slaughter. This was the card I was talking about. Whatever pirate it was that deals double damage, this one I think is better. It's more chaotic, it's more about group slug. All creatures have double strike and attack each turn of Fable. We're really taking advantage of that. We're taking advantage of the fact that our Thantis can get big. And if you deal double strike with your commander, you have commander damage as a win con. Very easy to do that even if it's a whopping 8 mana. And lands I pretty much kept the same because as I said, it's really personal preference, I guess. Everybody's a little bit different when it comes to lands and it's usually the least interesting thing about a deck. And for mana, I kept it for the most part the same. I did add one thing. I took out the talismans. I think we had just way too much ramp. I did add a sword of the animist because since we're going to be attacking a lot with our creatures, you just equip it to a creature, it gets plus one power and toughness, and you get a land. So you can keep it out there, you can keep attacking, and you won't really need any more ramp for the rest of the game. We have some political cards in here because politics in this deck with group slug, they go together really well. So Curse of Opulence will also help us out with mana. I think it's a great addition. This was also in the maybe section of the tapped out deck. So I think it's perfect for this. If players have to attack, they're likely going to attack the person who's going to allow them to get a gold. And then we have Hunted Horror, we have Hunted Troll, and Hunted Dragon. The Hunted creatures are great, and I guess Clackbridge Troll is also kind of a Hunted creature, but you're giving an opponent a set amount of creatures. That might not seem like the best idea at first until you realize there's a lot of benefits in this deck to allowing your opponents to have creatures. So if they can attack, they're going to attack. And you want them to attack because you have a lot of cool triggers here, like with Curse of Opulence, you get those gold tokens too. And Crown of Doom, I think, is a fantastic card for this deck. You pay three to get it out there and then two to give it to a player. Target player other than Crown of Doom's owner gains control of it. You activate this ability only during your turn and whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets plus two power until end of turn. If all creatures have to attack, they're going to attack someone they can deal a lot of damage to. Protection's a big part of this deck too. I think we need to focus on protecting our creatures, protecting ourselves. We don't necessarily have to prevent combat, so while I was thinking about adding things like Elephant Grass and Coastkin Falls, we do actually want them to attack us because we have several ways of punishing them for attacking us. Dolmen Gate's cool though because we can prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to attacking creatures we control. Our creatures are going to be attacking a lot. We have Swiftfoot Boots, Arachnogenesis, also have Obscuring Haze. Kind of doing the whole fog trick, Arachnogenesis is a little bit better because we do get some creatures out of the deal. We have Cunning Rhetoric. This is a benefit to allowing our opponents to attack us, is that we get cards like these. And this is a brand new one from Commander 2021. So whenever they attack us, we exile the top card of their library, and then we get to play that card. So we get to pretty much steal something from them if they attack us. We have Hissing Miasma, one of the cheaper enchantments that did this. I didn't want to put too many of these in here. Whenever a creature attacks us, its controller loses a life. Sudden Spoiling's a great way to just nerf all of your opponent's creatures if they have to attack you, and then block and kill them all. Whisper Silk Cloak, throw this onto Thantis and deal commander damage pretty easily. Ember Wild Captain. The Monarch is really cool. The Monarch in this kind of deck is what you want to look for. This is also going to burn them if they attack you while you're the Monarch. No Mercy is a big reason why we don't want to prevent our opponents from attacking us. We would rather just play cards like these that punish them if they do. And we have Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs. Same thing, it doesn't prevent them from attacking us, but we will get a 3-3 red ogre creature if they do, and they can't pay that 3 mana. We have Dread, 
pretty much the same thing as No Mercy, but on a creature. And I really liked it from the original deck, so I kept it in here. And then we have Vigor. So Vigor is great. We want to prevent combat damage to our creatures. We get more plus one plus one counters. They get bigger. They're going to deal even more damage. We have some removal in here. Molten Disaster is also kind of a win con too. If you pay the kicker cost, it gains split second, which is ridiculous. It deals X damage to each creature without flying and each player. We have Rakdos Charm, another really good utility card. I left Beast Within in here as well. Cross and Grip, great removal. Royal Assassin was an addition. We can tap it to destroy target tapped creature. A lot of creatures are going to be attacking, so this is a must have in this deck. We have Rampage of the Clans. This is what I played over Seeds of Innocence. Instant speed, destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent destroyed this way. Its controller creates a 3-3 green centaur creature token. So you're giving them creatures to attack with, even if you're destroying their artifacts and enchantments. There are a lot of benefits to that in this deck. And then we have Blasphemous Act. And for search, we have Demonic Tutor and Nature's Lore. I could have left Scheming Symmetry in here, and I could have added a Wishclaw Talisman. But that would have been a little too political and... Not necessarily what we want to do. We don't want to help anybody. We can help them in combat, but I'd rather just go for straight up Demonic Tutor. And we got our Slug cards in here. I love Cinder Vines. I think Cinder Vines, if you're playing red and green and you wanted a group Slug strategy, I think Cinder Vines is a must-have. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to that player. Then you can pay one mana and sack it to destroy an artifact or an enchantment, and it deals two damage to that permanence controller. We have Grismold. Again, giving your opponents creatures isn't really a bad thing if they have to attack. So you're going to get a ton of triggers for other things as well. And then we have Clothis. I really like Clothis, so I kept her in here. Just to take advantage of red and green, add that flavor in here for Group Slug. We have uh, Court of Ambition and Court of Ire. I think these are must-haves for this deck. Making ourselves the Monarch, that's even more card draw. But these are also group slug abilities. We want to deal a ton of damage to our opponents, and we want to make them lose life. So for the Monarch, both of these are even better. We have Disrupt Decorum. I love Goad in the deck, and this is the ultimate Goad spell. You Goad all creatures you don't control. Rankle Master of Pranks. All of those abilities, I think, are great in a group slug deck, and you can use them to your benefit. And then we have Lightning Reaver if we have to attack, or we want to take advantage of attacking. Why not play a creature like this? You also get group slug there with the theme. Deals damage equal to the number of charge counters on it to each opponent. So you want to keep dealing combat damage with it. Has Fear and Haste. Right of the Raging Storm. The beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts a 5-1 red elemental creature token named Lightning Rager onto the battlefield, it has Trample, Haste, and at the beginning of the end step you sacrifice it. So they don't have to attack with it, unless we have other cards that say so, but if you get a 5-1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste, you're probably going to attack with it, because you're not going to keep it, you're not going to be able to block with it. So this is a great card, it encourages combat. And Rurik Thar is another one that's forced to attack, so take advantage of that by playing it in this deck, where everything else pretty much is forced to attack, but you get more of a group slug theme here. Whenever a player casts a now creature spell, he's going to deal 6 damage to that player, and then we left in Archfiend of Despair, because I think it's great. You have a ton of ways of dealing combat damage, a ton of ways that our opponents are going to lose life, and this is going to make it even easier to kill them off. So thank you Angry Mexican for sending me your deck list and allowing me to make this video for you. If anyone else wants to do the same thing, just send me a message on Twitter or just at me and I'll try to take a look at your deck if I can. No promises, but uh, this might be something I continue to do for the future. If you like the video, subscribe, like, comment, share, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future ones. Void here signing off. Have a wonderful day.